light in 20th century. The physicist Kristen Huygens first described the wave nature of light as far back as the late 17th century. Until the end of 19th century, physicists assumed that light is a wave. The matter was quite distinct from one another. According to classical physics, matter is composed of particles that have mass and which occupies a position in space. On the other hand, light waves or electromagnetic waves were considered to have zero mass and their position in space could not be determined. If two are different, then how light interacts with matter and how our vision is created, which was a hard concept to understand because they were considered being in different categories. Light and matter, space and time play a central role in our life. Evolution has given our brain a compelling intuition for these concepts. Light was long considered as something given by God. Euclid recognized that light travels along straight lines. But to find out the speed of light, even famous scientists were unsuccessful, including Galileo Galilei. Isaac Newton was the first to investigate systematically what happens when a ray of white sunlight is sent through a glass prism so that the light is dispersed into a rainbow of colors. Newton argued that these different colors must correspond to different kinds of light particles. And Maxwell changed the understanding of light. A visible light is a small part of a spectrum of electromagnetic wave having a wavelength in the range from 400 nanometer in the blue to 800 nanometer in the red. Albert Abraham Michelson studied the interference of light waves. He demonstrated the unexpected result that the speed of light does not change with the direction relative to the motion of the Earth. This finding stimulated some revolutionary insights which Albert Einstein formulated in his special and general theory of relativity and which changed our concepts of space and time. This film is based on our understanding of light from 20th century to till now. Before watching this film, please watch our previous documentary, Light, the Complete Documentary Part 1, for better understanding. At the beginning of the 19th century, Thomas Young demonstrated that light behaves like a wave. He observed interference fringes by diffracting light from fine lines ruled on a glass plate. 20th century There was a famous scientist called Max Carl Ernst Ludwig Planck, popularly called Max Planck. He was a German theoretical physicist who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1918. Max Planck developed an alternative theory of black body radiation that explained the observed spectrum. Planck did a shocking discovery to challenge the idea that energy is continuous and can be transferred in any amount. Rather than is that energy is not continuous but quantized, meaning that it can only be transferred in individual packets or particles of a particular formulated size. 
each of these energy packets is known as a quantum or in plural form quanta. Planck's discovery that electromagnetic radiation is quantized forever changed the idea that light behaves purely as a wave. In actuality, the light seemed to have both wave-like and particle-like properties. He made the revolutionary assumption that light is emitted and absorbed in quanta of energy, E equals to HF, where H is Planck's constant and F is the frequency of light. The Photon Planck's discoveries of energy as quanta changed the electromagnetic radiation to a new name as photons. A photon is an elementary particle or quantum of light, which can be absorbed or emitted by atoms and molecules. When a photon is absorbed, its energy is transferred to that atom or molecule. German-born genius, theoretical physicists, Albert Einstein. The particle theory of light and the beginning of the modern concept of the photon is discovered because of Albert Einstein. He was the founding figure of both quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity. He published a paper on the photoelectric effect in 1905 about the emission of electrons from a metallic surface irradiated by UV rays. Before knowing what was Einstein's discovery, we should know what the photoelectric effect is. When light shines on a metal, electrons can be ejected from the surface of the metal. This phenomenon is called as the photoelectric effect. It is also often called photoemission. And the electrons that are ejected from the metal are called photoelectrons. In terms of their behavior and their properties, photoelectrons do not differ from other electrons. The prefix photo simply tells us that the electrons have been ejected from a metal surface by incident light. The concept of the photoelectric effect was first documented in 1887 by Henrich Hertz and later by Leonard in 1902. But Maxwell's electromagnetic wave theory of light did not explain both observations of the photoelectric effect. Einstein resolved this problem using Planck's revolutionary idea that light is a particle. The energy carried by each particle of light or photon depends on the light's frequency nu is formulated as E equals to H nu, where H is equal to Planck's constant that is equal to 6.6261 into 10 to the power minus 34 joule second. Since light is bundled up into photons, Einstein theorized that when a photon falls on the surface of a metal, the entire photon's energy is transferred to the electron. Part of this energy is used to remove the electron from the metal atoms and the rest is given to the ejected electrons as kinetic energy. Electrons emitted from underneath the metal surface lose some kinetic energy during the collision. But the surface electrons carry all the kinetic energy imparted by the photon and have the maximum kinetic energy. 
the total energy of the incoming photon must be equal to the kinetic energy of the ejected electron plus the energy required to eject the electron from the metal. The energy required to free the electron from a particular metal is also called the metal's work function. But it was quite difficult to understand and accept this type of light behavior where quantum theory was not available. Because on the one hand were the interference and diffraction experiments that required a wave nature of light for their explanation and on the other hand there was the photoelectric effect that could be understood by a particle type picture of light. A complete resolution and the formal theory that would rigorously explain all these phenomena would have to wait almost a 25 years till the birth of quantum mechanics in the summer of 1925. Quantum Physics Quantum physics is the study of matter and energy at its most fundamental level. A central concept of quantum physics is that energy comes in indivisible packets called quanta. Quanta behave very differently to macroscopic matter. Particles as electrons, atoms and other matter can behave like waves and waves behave as though they are particles. Newtonian physics was unable to explain effects that happen at subatomic level or at high speeds. This new theory that replaced Newton's and Maxwell's theories would have revolutionary consequences in our study on the nature of light. Niels Hendrik David Bohr, popularly called as Niels Bohr, who was a Danish Nobel Prize physicist who developed the Bohr model of the atom. He proposed that energy levels of electrons are discrete and that the electrons revolve in stable orbits around the atomic nucleus, but can jump from one energy level or orbit to another. In Bohr's model, electrons were restricted to defined circular orbits around the nucleus. An electron could not have just any amount of energy. It could only have the specific energy defined by the orbit it occupied. If an electron dropped from a high energy orbit to a low one, it released energy as light. Similarly, when incoming light caused an electron to jump to a higher energy orbit, that light was absorbed by the atom. First time, light or electromagnetic radiation understand as an integral part of an atom of a physical matter. Dirac Quantum Theory of Light Paul Adrian Morris Dirac, who was an English theoretical physicist, who is regarded as one of the most significant physicists of the 20th century. In 1932, aged 30, Dirac was appointed to Cambridge's Lucasian Chair of Mathematics, once held by Isaac Newton. Dirac made fundamental contributions to the early development of both quantum mechanics and quantum electrodynamics. He formulated the Dirac equation which describes the behavior of fermions and predicted the existence of antimatter. 
In year 1933, Dirac got the Nobel Prize in Physics with Erwin Schrödinger for the discovery of new productive forms of atomic theory. He also made significant contributions to the reconciliation of general relativity with quantum mechanics. Dirac published a paper in 1927, synthesized the wave and particle natures of light in a single theory, and gave birth to quantum electrodynamics. His new theory unified the previously separate phenomena of the light wave and the light quantum. It was the first theory that dealt successfully with the fact that when an atom absorbs a photon, the light disappears from the universe, and when an atom releases light, a photon appears in the universe. No theory before had accounted for the creation and annihilation of quantum objects such as photons. Dirac pictured a universe in which atoms contain an infinite supply of zero-energy photons available for release as real photons if energy is supplied to them. The wave particle picture of light embedded in the Dirac's theory of light had novel and important consequences. The most important was the reshaping of our concept of vacuum. Quantum Vacuum Before the discovery of quantum field theory, the vacuum was perceived as nothing. A place where no light existed, nothing moved, and there was no energy present. The quantum mechanical picture of vacuum turned out to be dramatically different. According to Dirac's theory of light, the quantum harmonic oscillator associated with each electromagnetic wave of frequency nu has an energy equal to a ha nu by 2 in vacuum. There are infinite number of modes in the universe, each associated with a frequency nu. Thus, the total energy in the universe can be calculated by adding this vacuum energy for each mode and the result is an infinite amount of energy. There are quantum mechanical fluctuations even in vacuum. This forbids a classical description of absolutely zero electric and magnetic fields in vacuum. Instead, we have fluctuations randomly non-zero fields at any time. Dirac gave a revolutionary new way of thinking about light that the electromagnetic field quantization. When electromagnetic field quantized, it has the ability to exist in a state of pure nothingness, the so-called vacuum state, having zero energy, and if energy given to it, then it can create a real photon from zero energy photon. Spontaneous Emission An important consequence of the fluctuations in the vacuum field is the phenomenon of spontaneous emission by an atom. Thus, even in the absence of an applied field, an atom in the excited state can decay to the ground state and spontaneously emit a photon. Since the direction and time of emission are random, this process represents a fundamental source of quantum noise and a limitation to any coherent process or such as lasing. The 7th Solvay Conference of 1933, Dirac told we needed to change their conception of the vacuum. It could no longer be considered as empty. 
The vacuum was actually a wash with particle-antiparticle pairs being created and annihilated too quickly to be detected directly. Laser A coherent light source In 1950s, a new coherent source of light was invented, first in the microwave region and then in the optical region. This new kind of light source or laser is one of the greatest inventions of the second part of the 20th century has helped to revolutionize many branches of science and technology ranging from biotechnology and precision measurements to communication and remote sensing. The physical process behind conventional light sources is initially majority of atoms and molecules are in their ground state. When energy is supplied to the atoms or molecules, some of them go to the excited states and then radiate via spontaneous emission. The resulting light is a white light sent in all direction and is incoherent. On the other hand, the dominant emission process in a laser is stimulated emission. By a clever design, the radiated photons by the atoms or molecules are able to stimulate other atoms to radiate with the same frequency and same direction. The resulting radiation is coherent, monochromatic and highly directional. Quantum Interference and Delayed Choice Quantum Eraser our present understanding on the nature of light is that light is neither wave nor particle, but an elusive intermediate entity that obeys the superposition principle. The experiment that demonstrates wave-particle duality is the Young's two-slit interference experiment. When a single photon goes through the slits, it registers as a point-like event on the screen. An accumulation of such events over repeated trials builds up a probabilistic fringe pattern that is characteristic of wave interference. However, if we arrange to measure which slit the photon goes through, the interference always disappears. Right in 21st century, physicists create new form of light. Take two flashlights into a dark room and shine them so that the light beams cross. Do you notice anything peculiar? Probably not. That's because the individual photons that make up light do not interact. Instead, they simply pass each other. But what if light particles could be made to interact? Attracting and repelling each other like atoms in ordinary matter. Scientists at MIT and Harvard University now demonstrated that photons can indeed be made to interact, an accomplishment that could open a path toward using photons in quantum computing. In a paper published led by Vladin Vuletek, the professor of physics at MIT, and Professor Mikhail Lukin from Harvard University reports that it has observed groups of three photons interacting and in effect sticking together to form a completely new kind of photonic matter. In an experiment, the researchers found that when they shone a very weak laser beam through a dense cloud of ultra-cold rubidium atoms just a millionth of a degree above absolute zero, cooling the atoms slows them to a near standstill. Rather than exiting the cloud as single randomly spaced photons, the photons bound together in pairs or triplets suggesting some kind of interaction, in this case attraction, taking place among them. 
The team observed pairs of photons interacting and binding together for the first time, creating an entirely new state of matter. The scientists wonder whether interactions could take place between not only two photons but more. They found that this same phenomenon can occur with three photons forming an even stronger bond than the interaction between two photons. These photons are not just each of them independently interacting, but they are all together interacting strongly. For example, you can combine oxygen molecules to form O2 and O3, which is known as ozone, but not O4. And for some molecules, you can't even form a three-particle molecule. So it was an open question. Can you add more photons to a molecule to make bigger and bigger things? While photons normally have no mass and travel at 300,000 kilometers per second, that is the speed of light. The researchers found that the bound photons actually acquired a fraction of an electron's mass. These newly weighed down light particles were also relatively sluggish, traveling about 100,000 times slower than normal non-interacting photons. The results demonstrate that photons can indeed attract or entangle each other. If they can be made to interact in other ways, photons may be harnessed to perform extremely fast, incredibly complex quantum computations. With repulsion of photons, can they be such that they form a regular pattern like a crystal of light? Or will something else happen? Time will tell, can we be able to make a substance with help of photon particle like atom or molecule? We have come a long way from earlier studies of light trying to understand vision as light emanating from our eyes to description of light as rays, then as particles, and then waves and finally exhibiting both particle and wave natures. We can only speculate how our present understanding about light will be perceived decades or centuries from now. Will our picture of light quanta as both waves and particles survive? Or will something else intuitive replace this incomprehensible picture? Yet, we feel least certain of our understanding of what light is, what photon is. In spite of the great success of the mathematical theory to describe light, to quote Albert Einstein in 1954, all the 50 years of conscious brooding have brought me no closer to the answer to the question, what are light quanta? On the other hand, cosmologists tell us that known matter contributes only 5% of the universe. Dark matter of unknown composition accounts for 26.8% and even more mysterious dark energy for 68.3%. As we begin to better understand these mysteries, our concepts of light and matter are likely changes in the future. Thanks for watching my video.